We have Shitty Dragoon back with another T-Worlds coding episode. A kind of special one since it's not really coding or not really T-Worlds, but I, I try my best. So today I wanted to talk about the compiler, which is a crucial part to your whole journey. I hope you've watched and successfully followed the compiling introduction videos. I made three of them for the three operating systems that the series supports, so macOS, Windows and Linux. And um, yeah, I hope you got that running and you compiled T-Word source code and so on. And you probably didn't bother into like understanding what this whole concept is. And it's, I think it's kind of important. So, you know, when, um, when we edit the T-Word source code with uh, VS Code, you know, we, um, can you read something? How did I, ah, forgot all my shortcuts. It didn't code in a while. Anyways, so is that big enough? Can we go like this? Ah, that's maybe too big. So, um, if you write code like this, you know, it's somewhat English human readable stuff, right? So that's a language we made up for humans and the computer doesn't understand this. You know, the computer is just a CPU that has a fixed set of um, operations it understands. And those in operations do not, um, yeah, know about if statements and functions. Um, it's very basic stuff. Yeah, it's machine code, right? So this is not machine code, it is a C++. And, um, so that's where the compiler comes in. The compiler transforms this C++ code into, I think, mostly first into assembly, which is a also somewhat human readable representation of machine code, because essentially machine code is just zeros and ones of code that the CPU knows. And, um, you know, humans decided remembering zeros and ones is hard to do. So um, they replaced these zeros and ones by keywords usually three letter short ones like move m o v to move a value from yeah one place to another that's a common assembly command and it's not spelled move but but only three uh, letters and um, that's assembly you know look it up it's kind of interesting in my opinion anyways so um so the compiler takes this all, all this stuff and transforms it to a different language, uh, more closer to the CPU um, language. And yeah, and then the assembler comes and transforms, as I said, like these uh, MOV keywords into zeros and ones so that the CPU then can understand it. And then it will create a binary file. So, um, you know, there's the difference between a text file, which the source file is. It's You could also slap on the extension.txt instead of cpp. And um, that, um, yeah, I mean, text files are just, there's just text in it. And you can open it with any text editor, with notepad, with text edit, with VS Code. And yeah, it's uh, kind of straightforward. And there are also binary files that you know, if you try to open it with a text editor, it's just a bunch of garbage. And um, they get interpreted or <clears throat> passed differently on the on the file type. For example, do I have your office, um, your Word or whatever um, files? Those are actually no plain text files because they also include formatting and stuff. And um, that's where you have the binary magic that then gets interpreted by your um, office tools. Anyways, so, um, right. And since there are different operating systems talking to the CPU and different CPUs, there are different sets of um, opcodes like, uh, like different flavors of machine code. And that's why you have to um, compile again if you switch operating system. For example, I'm currently on Linux here. If I were to compile this T-Worlds um, client or server, whatever, you won't be able to execute that on Windows because on Linux um, we have ELF, 
binaries that are different to the exe format on windows i don't actually know how it's called on windows i don't whatever so it's a different file format so that's why you have to compile on each um, operating system or you have to cross compile which i'm definitely not going to go into here but um, that's that and there are also different types of cpus there 32-bit and 64-bit CPUs, you probably heard about that one already. They are somewhat backwards compatible, but um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, why don't we go and compile a basic thing? Uh, let me quickly go and make a temporary directory, call it, haha, compile. Yeah, you don't have to understand or follow these steps. I'm just going in a temporary directory just for me to have something here. And um, there I'm going to um, code a file called um, foo.c because why not? So then we have this file here and let's, oh, C. Well, anyways, let's write some C code because fuck C++. You know, C++ is just slapped on top of C and C++ can do essentially everything. Some things are a little bit different, but uh, it's essentially C with more stuff in it. And the t -word source code is, is, yeah, it's mostly C code. Well, it's, it is written in a more C style than in a C++ style. So that's fine that we can write a C file here. Right, so um, let's include something here. Include standard input output um, dot h. Um, so what this does is it um, takes like all these um, hashtag or like all these, um, yeah, it, it's a hashtag, right? All these hashtag keywords you find in the source code, um, they are treated by the preprocessor. So that's somebody who, who jumps in before the compiler. So before the code gets compiled, the preprocessor looks over it and if it sees a hashtag, it does something. Um, and you, you've probably seen these includes, um, which is one example for that. And that will, um, like in the in the example of tworlds, it will take the um, protocol.h file, which is in the tworlds code, in the keyword source code um, in the code base that's the word I wanted to use so it's just linking these files together or well, it's actually not linking it's literally taking what is in protocol that age taking everything and putting it in here that is what it's doing it's putting in the whole file and there there's a problem though and that is we have this uh, enum defined here and sometimes you have variables and classes defined in here and um, protocol.h is probably let me search for that protocol.h wait pro did i yeah i probably misspelled it nobody saw that yes is um, included in multiple files so it's multiple times the preprocessor goes there and slaps it in and then we end up with like 32 times the same uh, source code like it's duplicated and that can cause errors and that's why we have another preprocessor magic thingy that is include guards and you can write if in def which boils down to if not defined um, and then this you know, I don't actually know how these are called, like keyword, variable, whatever. Um, then execute this until the end if. So this is essentially some if statement, right? So you have if not defined, use this code until here. Like this is one if statement. If body end if. So, um, and what does that mean, use it? Um, it's like, if this would not be true, like if this um, would be defined and then it's not not defined, so it would be false, you know, 
kind of complicated in this example but if this if statement if this condition is not met then this code will not be passed onto the compiler so it will will not be in the final binary at all it will just be extracted and so what what is going on here why do we say if not defined and what is this and in the next line we say define this so what happens the first time protocol.h gets included it says is this already defined it's like no it, it's nowhere defined and then it jumps to the next line okay define it and then it slaps in all the code and then if another file includes protocol.h again it's like is this not defined and it already defined it in the previous file so it's like well this is defined already so then it will not slap in this code again that's how these include guards work right so let's go back to our foo.c so I included standard input dot h, uh, input output, std, like standard io input output um, dot h. Um, so where is this file? I, I did not write or create this file. This ships with your compiler or your C libraries or whatever. It's like installed on your operating system if you followed the compiling setup. Um, and I think I can actually control click it and see it's on my system under user include and there is this file so it's like system wide installed it's from the standard it's some crazy stuff here and why we um, the reason why we included that file is it gives us a handy function that we can call to just print out stuff um, that would be otherwise kind of complicated. I think you cannot even write a hello world without including something from the system, but I don't know. Anyways, so um, let's go. Um, every C program and C++ program needs a main function to be existing because that's where the code will, will start executing. So if you want to have a program that actually launches and executes code, then you need a main function. If you just want a library or something else, then you don't need it. But we want actual, a fully working program needs a main function. So um, I don't know or remember how much I dived into functions, but functions uh, essentially, they have a name. Here's the name main. And then they have a body where they have a bunch of code. And then you can call this function uh, in the, y by writing the name and then parentheses and the argument. The arguments um, are specified in here, so they are none. So we also provide none. Always put a semicolon. If we do, if this line gets executed, the content of this um, function will be executed. And there's also int, the return type. So we have to, or should, like the main is special. Uh, you can also like ignore that, but we should return something here, which is the exit code of the program, which is, um, I think. Windows doesn't even have exacodes. I'm not sure. Probably it does. I don't know. Well, exacode is like if the program finished successfully or not. And um, so the value that we return here will then be um, returned. So let's return one here. Let, let me quickly show what exacodes are. Not that it matters at all, but I feel like. So how do we compile this? Um, if you're on Windows, which is kind of likely, and you have MinGW. I think my compiling video featured Visual Studio where you can also compile. But if you want to follow like exactly the way I do it, I recommend go and get MinGW. Fallen KN made a video about that. I can link it in the description. Um, and there you can get your like um, GCC for Windows. Um, you know, GCC is a program that is a compiler for C. Um, there's also Clang for Linux and um, GCC. Those are like the two big ones. On Windows, you have uh, Visual Studio and MinGW. And on macOS, you have like Xcode. And there's also Clang and um, GCC. So you can follow along uh, just fine with GCC on uh, macOS. So, um, to execute this program, we just write its name and then it takes some arguments. 
So it takes the, the source file and then dash o for output file. So that's um, the name of the file that we get out, the compiled binary. We can choose it freely. I will just use foo. And if we type in that, you see nothing happened, no errors. That means everything went fine. If I type in ls to list the files, maybe you are a little bit um, afraid of, of the console um, or the terminal, that's fair. So we have um, this foo.c file here and we have this binary here. Right, so um, as you can see, it's green because my opera uh, operating system was like, you know, that's marked as executable, so I can um, quickly launch it with dot uh, slash foo. Um, on Windows, you probably write something like dot backslash foo dot exe um, or just foo dot exe, something like that. And um, it should work just fine. Um, or you can also double click it. On macOS, it's the same as on Linux. And if we execute that, nothing happens. On uh, Linux, you can uh, echo question mark, which gives you the return code of the last program, which is one. That is the number we put in here. So we can put in 42 and compile it again. Then we execute it again. And then we echo the return code and we see it's 42. So that's, um, that's this return code. It's sometimes used for like to see if the program successfully finished or stuff like that. Um, usually zero means everything went fine and everything else is kind of bad. Anyways, so let's go with zero here. And let's go continue our journey to Hello World. 17 minutes in and still didn't um, create a Hello World. Wow. Okay, so there's a function called puts and it's coming from standard IO. And my VS Code already tells us, tells us what it can do. It writes a string followed by a new line to standard output. Um, so we can put in a string like foo or hello world. So good. Um, followed by a semicolon. And then it will take this string slap on a new line at the end and then print it out to standard output, which is like the terminal, like the like basic thing. You will see. Right, we saved that file. Then we gcc it again. foo.c dash o foo. Then we execute it. And you can see we have hello world printed out here. Isn't that exciting? Well, yeah, depends. So that is compiling. Um, let me quickly go into, yeah, let, what was this program called Objdump? Um, it's a Linux tool. I don't know if it works on macOS, but you don't have to follow along this step. Just like, look at me. You don't, this is like something really off topic. I just wanted to show you now. Um, so yeah, cool. We can do that and pipe it into less. As I said, like, don't care about what I'm doing here. Just look at this. So this is, um, this is the binary that we compiled and this tool tries to revert it back to assembly because I told you assembly is just replacing binary like zeros and ones. Um, uh, no, like the assembler takes these keywords and replaces them to zeros and ones. So we can, we can disassemble that. It's like the other way around. So we take the zeros and ones, the binary data and slap on these words again. As you can see, these are the assembly keywords that I was talking about. We have like add and subtract. Is that subtract even? I think it's called sub, I don't know. And here's the move, like that's like the classic assembly keyword, I would say. And you know, that's a lot of code. That's shit ton of assembly code. We only wrote like one line of code in C and it, like the compiler and the linker and so on, they slap a shit ton of crap in here. Anyways, so we can search for main and is that, are we, is that what the main we want? Yeah, that's the main we want. Okay, so um, the compiler puts in a bunch of boilerplate code or whatever, I don't know, it's just bloated. Anyways, so this is basically the code we wrote. So this is a hexadecimal representation of the binary opcode 
you know you can it's easier to represent binary in hex since you need less letters and like huge zero and one strings are easy to get confused with and hex is like kind of better for humans and shorter so that's why we use this instead of zeros and ones anyways so here we have our assembly keywords here the raw data and here like the index or whatever and this is a comment so here are the commands the minomics or something like that they are called and here are the arguments and this is like some weird you know function boilerplating setting up the stack pointer and whatnot um so that's all crazy stuff anyways so the interesting part is that one it's call q i don't know what call q is but i can read call and like calling functions that's um that's what we are doing here and you can see it calls puts at plt like don't get confused by that so it's like linking against puts in somewhere but this line actually just you can you can if you spend a little time looking at that figure out that this is calling the function puts and then it moves zero into eax which is a register like ah, fuck registers that's some memory in the cpu whatever that it's used for like returning from functions and then it pops and returns and so that means these lines return zero from the function so as you can see you know if you try to figure out and fizzle around with the assembly you can actually assume what the c code was by looking at the binary and this is called reverse engineering um, which i'm definitely not going into but it's probably worth knowing that if you write your t words application and you're like i want to make something super secret super private super proprietary and um, I have some crazy mechanics in there that I want to be secret and nobody should ever figure out how they work in, for example, a client. And then you publish the client, but only the compiled version and not the source code. Do not assume that nobody will ever understand anything about your source code, because as I just showed you, it is possible with a lot of work to make some educated guesses about your source code. Um, given the binary so that's that um, right and as you saw um, let's get back to the compiler this command looks kind of simple it's kind of straightforward but we only have one source file we have no external libraries and um, TWS is a big project so the if we would if we were to compile with GCC by hand it would take a lot of commands like we have to put in all these source files from different directories then we have to link them together then we have to link against external libraries such as sdl for like graphics and key um like user input and stuff like that so that's why people at some point came up with these like autoconf scripts shell scripts that generate these commands for you and then people came up with make that does that for you so you just type in make which then executes a make file which then executes these gcc commands and then people came like along with this concept of a cmake which then takes a cmake list.txt to then generate a make file to then execute make which then executes the compiler so we have abstraction upon abstraction upon ex a little bit of abstraction so usually in bigger projects you don't um, interfere with the compiler directly. You have your like compiler tools um, build, build systems. That's what they are called. And you know, a pretty famous one is CMake. Already mentioned that in the um, compiling series. You probably used that already. If you didn't use BAM. So BAM is a custom um, build system made by the creator of T-World, so that's kind of cool. So these two exist to um, make your life easier when compiling. Cool. So that's that. Let's get back to T-Words. There's one more thing I wanted to show you is conf underscore debug. So 
another preprocessor thing. As you can see, this code is like grayed out. That means this is not defined somewhere. So this code will not be in the final release. So if you compile it, this code won't be in there. So you might wonder if you search conf debug in the whole source space, there's only if defined, if defined, if defined, there's no define. So it's never defined. So what is this useless crap? And uh, conf stands for configuration, I guess. And debug is, you know, there's release and debug. These two modes, you can also specify that to GCC. If you compile with GCC in debug mode, it will keep symbols in there, which means you have um, function names, global variable names in the binary itself. That makes reverse engineering way more easier, but not only reverse engineering, it also makes debugging easier. So if your application crashes and you have symbols in there, it can tell you in which function, at which line it crashed. That's really helpful. That's why when you have like crashes or you want to develop and investigate your application, you usually use debug. It also skips a few optimizations. So it's usually bigger in size, slower in performance and easier to work with if you run into errors. And there's the release mode, which is like the exact opposite. It's fast, lean, ready for production. And if you can tell CMake to go in a debug mode. Um, so if we go to our build directory and we execute CMake, we can specify d uh, dash d CMake build type debug or release. And there are other CMake um, things. I don't want to go into CMake that much. You can read it up in the DDRS network readme under github.com slash ddnet slash ddnet. They have a uh, good documentation about the CMake stuff. Anyways, so if we do that, it will create a make file and use like debug things. And that will also set this variable. So if we execute this command with debug here, this code will be included in the final release, like in the in the final binary that we create. If we don't specify that, this code won't be there. And you know, in TWIRLS, that's something TWIRLS specific. These symbols and so on, that's like generic compiling and computer science, you know. But this is TWIRLS specific, this conf debug um, thing. And this is TWIRLS specific debugging code. Um, yeah, you can look through it. There are some things that are only there in debug um, versions of the game. For example, here the server, you have like um, debugging dummies, um, since they are kind of crashy, as this comment uh, tries to tell us, they are probably not suitable for the release. So that's that. I think BAM compiles in debug mode by default, in opposite to CMake, where you have to specify debug mode. Let me go for the BAM people. Do I have BAM installed? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. So I think the BAM command was conf. Let me try, try something. Yeah, that that's weird. Okay. I think, well, it doesn't sanitize this. So I think it was conf equals release and conf equals debug to compile and debug. Or um, let me quickly, if, yeah, that's if in death yes so if you provide conf equals debug it will compile in debug mode if you provide conf equals release it will compile in release mode but if you provide nothing it's debug as you can see it will now create this directory so if we start here and we have our build directory and there we have our architecture and there we have a Oh, okay, that happened to the X. Interesting, didn't know that. Anyways, so we have our release folder and our debug folder here. And yeah, they include what they claim to include. So 
that is the compiler, the preprocessor, debug versus release. I hope you have learned something and I hope I haven't left out something important. So we will get back to um, debug mode when we get into debugging, trying to fix some crashes. That's also planned for a future episode. Um, yeah, so that's it for for this week's episode of T-Words Coding with your host Chilladragon. See you. What am I doing here?